Adherents call themselves freemen on the land. They belong to what some consider to be a harmless fringe movement in Canada. But others argue it may be larger and more worrying than it appears. The group is fairly new, but its numbers are swelling. And some police fear its potential for violence may also be on the rise. Our Adrian Arsenault now with this feature investigation, Finding the Freeman. Okay, I've just been pulled over for my own protection. I'm filming it. But right now, the officer's going to take a look at my affidavit of truth. I've stated that I'm not driving. I'm traveling. A Canadian gets pulled over by police, but has no intention of handing over his license, registration, or insurance. He doesn't have them, doesn't believe in them. You, you don't have a driver's license, correct? No. And no insurance, correct? Do you have insurance? It's written in all capital letters. So that's my person. It's not me. You have your license and all that on you? Uh, why? And this isn't just one case. I'm just using that as my uh, form of identification to let YouTube you know is full of these scenes of seemingly nonsense talking Canadians up to something at traffic stops. The reason I pulled you over, I've never seen your plate before. Is that a registered plate? Police are concerned and slowly learning the signs. It starts with seeing phony plates. Fake, homemade license plates, almost always including the word free. They'll say that they have the common law right to travel and that doesn't require any authorization by any government. I first would like to have an understanding from you that I am requesting to not create joinder to this person because I do not believe that that person is me. So I just was served something and I didn't... They're called Freeman on the Land. And according to members of the movement and security analysts, there may be as many as 30,000 of them in Canada. Followers of a worldwide anti-government philosophy preached endlessly online. All of their rules have no power over us. I haven't filed income taxes or paid income taxes in 17 years now. Using here, obscure legalese and legalese. old texts, they genuinely believe cops and courts and governments have no control over them. Watch what happens when a freeman acts up in a Guelph court. Sir, I love you for a will free keep coming out. You are not that. This, this is a sit down, sailor. I Please remove this gentleman from the courtroom. Oh, you guys are communist, communist China. That's what you guys are acting like right now. All part of a script. Freemen follow worldwide what they believe is a formula for avoiding taxes, mortgages, utility bills. All these fines and summons. Property can be seized. The man some consider a leader of the Freeman movement, Robert Menard. They've hijacked the country, the banking system, and the courts and the justice system, and we have to do something about it. The warmongers use our money. Confident man. This movement seems to attract more followers the worse the economy becomes. Some think it offers a way out of financial despair. I don't pay income tax. Uh, I have no obligation to pay income tax. And what most people fail to realize is when you work and you get paid a wage, that's not even really income. And licensing cars? Apparently unnecessary too. So you're saying you don't need a driver's license? If all you're doing is engaging in travel, you're going from point A to point B, and you are not engaging in commerce on the highway, that's public roads, it's public highway, and no, you do not need a license to do it. Confused yet? It gets worse. Freeman claimed the numbers on your birth certificate correspond with a secret trust account. Learn how to access it, and money or property is yours. So what does that number correspond to in, in your mind? I would be willing to bet that that will correspond with a security, um, like a stock security, a, a stock certificate evidencing our ownership in Canada. So this works? Yeah, I found it works. Not so fast. The Department of Finance calls these schemes myths. The RCMP issues internal warnings to officers about Freeman. Courts train on handling Freeman outbursts, but somehow believers still sign up. For all this. John Morhunis certainly did. His interest started when strapped for cash, he heard friends talking about Freeman. Then he did a little online research. The smooth-talking Menard hooked him, he said, completely and catastrophically. I've suffered greatly, my family has, because we bought into this. But in the beginning, he was excited. With encouragement of Freeman, he and his fiancée believed they'd found a way to take this empty North Bay house and move into it. 
As persistently advised, they put a notice in the paper, filed what Freeman call a claim of right with the police, and thought the house would be theirs. No need to pay. Hold on there. At this point, I have to interrupt the flow of their show a little bit. Uh, I kind of remember this guy contacting me. I think it was either through Facebook or on, on the forum. Might have been through email. But what I remember about this, if this was the same guy up in North Bay, and I'm pretty sure it was, he was advised against trying to engage in this, this course of action that he took on his own because we, we told him it wasn't going to work. And we told him that because he was trying to squat in a house which wasn't abandoned. It was listed, and if I recall correctly, he gained access to the house by agreeing to purchase it and then going back on his word afterwards. And we told him, no, you can't do that, and the notices and claims are not going to work. And now he, he decided he got upset at us, I remember, for not providing him with the level of support that he had expected and wanted in the handholding. And uh, essentially, we told him, look, there's a minefield there. Don't even try to cross it. And he was like, screw you, runs across it, gets blown up. Now he points at us and he's saying that we are to blame. The fundamental thing about Freemanery and being a free man is accepting responsibility. And if he wants to blame us, when clearly it was his actions that, that, that predicated this. And plus, we are not the people who threw him in jail. You're a smart guy. How did you fall for that? Over time, things start sounding good. It's a gradual process. It's drilled into the people that watch these videos the same way. Repetition, repetition. It's basic brainwashing. And it was too good to be true. Days after squatting in the house, police pounced. The Freeman. Not the police, but the Freeman. How dare they take my life from me? Because it was them. And they're convincing, and they're prodding, and they're pushing. <laughs> A hard lesson learned, but really just the beginning of the Canadian cautions, because there are dimensions to this movement that go far beyond the need for a new warning of fresh scams. The Freeman movement may seem new in Canada, but travel south to the United States, and you'll find that it's been building for a very long time. Here, the Freeman are known as sovereigns. It's economic despair that fuels their fury, and that rage here has turned murderous. For decades, sovereigns livid with government have targeted official buildings, police, anyone with authority. Timothy McVeigh, who helped blow up the Oklahoma Federal Building, was a sovereign citizen. So was Joe Stack, who flew his plane into an IRS building in Texas. More frequent have been shootings. At least a dozen officers have been killed by sovereigns. Nearly 19 hurt in shootouts with sovereigns and other anti-government extremists since 2009. In a corner of economically pained Missouri, J.J. McNabb and Bob Poder. But driving around with an AK-47 was normal for them. Was it really? Americans who've made it their mission to track sovereign citizens. A lot of what they say is what a lot of Americans believe. I think we are overtaxed, and I think we are. I think the government has too much control of our life. But I don't take it to that extreme to want to kill innocent police officers that are doing their job on the street. Hello, one one. Where is your emergency? Exit two seventy five on forty. Bob Podert, once an Arkansas police chief, has a good reason for his curiosity about sovereigns. May twentieth, twenty ten. A traffic stop in West Memphis, Arkansas. Two of his officers pull over a vehicle with the ubiquitous phony plates. The driver, Jerry Kane, hands the first officer, Bill Evans, an odd stack of documents, as Freeman and Sovereigns do. Officer Evans signals for his partner to help. It's off camera. Bill has Jerry Kane, the father, in the back talking with him. Brandon is focused on the paperwork, and a 16-year-old kid gets out with an AK-47. Joe Kane shoots Bill Evans 11 times. He falls in a ditch. As Brandon takes cover behind his car, the hood of his car, 
the kid shoots over the hood of the car, the bullets ricochet and caught him on the chin and takes the back of his head off. And he's thrown back on the pavement. Sorry, I have to interrupt again. Sir, I am deeply, deeply sorry for your loss. That is a sad and tragic turn of events. It's avoidable, it's unnecessary, and my heart goes out to you. And on behalf of, well, pretty much all Canadians who saw that, our hearts go out to you, and I'm sorry for your loss. Sincerely. It is my sincere hope that nothing like that ever happens in Canada and that the people in the States can avert more of that sort of action as well. It's certainly not something that we advocate. It's, something, it's not something that brings anyone I know any joy. It's a heartbreak is what it is and I, I feel very sorry for you and I'm sad for your loss. I, I think partly you're going through a grieving process and you're dealing with the anger part. And I hope that you find the closure you need and to grieve properly. It, uh, I apologize for the CBC using a, a grieving father's anger as fuel for their propaganda. That's, that's kind of offensive to me. And I hope that you don't real uh, you, you don't believe that just because people some sovereign citizens in the states uh, engage in those actions that it means all sovereign citizens do. And I hope you realize that the people of Canada and the free man movement in Canada has nothing to do with that type of sovereign mentality whatsoever. The danger I see is that by speaking against, in general, people who question the government, it creates the opportunity for the police to respond out of fear in a harsher manner than they would otherwise need to. And thus, it could be almost a self-fulfilling prophecy where you end up with two parties, both acting in fear of each other, bringing violence to bear because of that. I don't think the, the fix for this is going to be making uh, dis, disputing with the government or questioning authority, making that unlawful. That's certainly not the proper course of action to deal with this. And my concern is that your words might actually generate fear in our peace officers up here and then that will result in the violence that you're seeking to avoid. In any event, again, I'm deeply sorry for your loss, sir. That's a, a sad tragedy. I, I see your pain. It, it breaks my heart. And I want you to know that you have the condolences of all Canadians, be they freemen or not. God's peace to you. As Chief Hodard hears officers are down, he races to the scene. Moments later, that's him in the white shirt for seeing Bill Evans in the ditch, then being warned not to go further because the second officer dead on the pavement is his son, Brandon Hodard. I stood over him in disbelief. And I knew that I had some decisions to make as a chief and as a father. And I, I, was, I did not know what to do at that point. My entire life changed forever the second I saw him. Jerry and Joe Kane were finally stopped for good after they killed my son and his partner that day. Jerry and Joe Kane were killed in a shootout with police just a few hours later. Bob Poder now repeats this story in excruciating detail to police forces all across the United States and Canada. 
this is the cautionary tale. But some Canadian cops still wonder if it could ever get that bad with Canadian Freeman. An undercover cop from Guelph, Ontario, who's met more than a few, been burdened by their bizarre paperwork, thinks the annoyance might end there. The level of violence is not the same, but the Freeman have been identified as being more left of centre, um, far more liberal than, than the militia and whatnot that you see down in the States. Different cultures, certainly different gun cultures, but will that blunt the force? Canada has to be aware of what's happening. J.J. McNabb doesn't think so. She's a tax fraud investigator who often infiltrates online both Freeman and Sovereign groups. Then she coaches cops on what to watch for. There are no borders. When I go online and I you know, watch people interact between Canada and the United States, people don't differentiate. They use whatever they think will get them what they want. She sees more parallels than language. Sovereigns are notorious for getting back at officials they don't like with a barrage of lawsuits, liens filed against their houses, what the FBI calls paper terrorism. She says Freeman do it too, and she warns there's a dangerous next step. Now they're into the small acts of, of basically, you know, saying go away to the government, which is driver's license, which is car registration, maybe it's property taxes. Um, when those don't work, acts of violence are the next. What many may not realize is that there has already been some Freeman violence in this country. May 2006, a 15-hour standoff with police in a home in Jasper, Ontario. Rodney King, a Freeman who'd fought against authorities, shot and wounded a police officer. In the house, a cache of weapons. A one-off or warning of what's to come? McNabb says online chatter is increasingly aggressive. She's starting to record cases of Canadian police being assaulted and judges threatened. So all of that sounds like an escalation. It does. Yes. It's bad, baby, it's bad. On a CK1. And look at what she and Bob Hodert say are signs of Freeman testing their limits. 537 Papa Hotel Fox. Another traffic stop, May 2010, British Columbia. The driver doesn't wait for the cop, seems to want to reach for something. Whoa! <laughs> what worries you here? Well, him getting an AK 47 or some weapon out. How you doing? What? You're not in uniform, you're not a peace officer. This is common law jurisdiction. You're interrupting my right to travel. Thankfully, there's no gun. Not in my vehicle. Mr. Mitchell. Uh, don't touch me. You're, you're being don't charged with refusal. But there is a good 15 minutes of arguing. Oh. I'm only yeah. cooperating under protest and direct. Deep into the tape, a scuffle, and finally a call for backup. Ow! Take him back. He's not going anywhere. Okay. Consider yourself warned, Canada, is Podert's thought. What stands in my mind over everything watching this video is how the movement has progressed in Canada and some Canadians don't think it's that bad that it's uh, not a threat. That, that is a threat. Is this? What is a free man? Well, first, before you understand uh, what a free man is, you have to understand what your birth certificate is. What about the stories Freeman seem fond of telling? Robert Menard has one, a tale of a hunter approached by a parks warden because he didn't have a license for his gun. There was a hunter. He was out hunting for sustenance. A conservation officer came by, asked him for a license. He said, I don't have one. He said, I'm taking your gun. But he said, that's okay. I got 12 more at home. The conservation officer says, well, every time I see you, I'm going to take your firearm. But he said, that'll work until you get the last one. Then you're only taking bullets. Just a story, interpret it as you wish, he says. But some things need explaining. A letter Menard once sent to a police officer who pulled him over. He will pay dearly, he wrote. Your Just family. a figure of speech, he says. But Lose what about this? One thing, but you could be lawfully shot and killed. Is that is that not threatening that. a cop? If, just because a cop is wearing a uniform doesn't mean they are incapable of breaking the law or engaging in actions which are clearly threatening to our very way of life. 
what I am doing here is giving them warning that this is what could happen if they don't actively learn the law better and start operating within their mandates. But how or rather within the law as Freeman sees it. In favor that they are the vast majority are peaceful, may not ever act out against anyone, and most are insulted by the suggestion there might be danger ahead. They worry so much about how the movement will be portrayed. Robert Menard had two cameramen shooting us, shooting this interview. Yeah, and the thing is, when, when the one bad guy gets a lot of press and then everyone gets labeled as that, but what you don't see are the hundreds and hundreds of people who haven't done that, who are using, you know, love. So you're not a dangerous guy? I'm a sweetheart. Of course I'm not a dangerous guy. Back in North Bay, the man who considers himself a victim of the Freeman, once a follower who, like many now, paid with a lost reputation and criminal charges and financial ruin. For him, Menard as sweetheart is hard to swallow. Yeah, yeah, sure, a sweetheart. Affecting people mentally is more dangerous than going up and physically pushing them. You know, and you got a few people saying this is cool, it'll convince a few others, convince a few others, and it snowballs. And where does it end? Bob Podard says his mind leaps to the worst possible scenario, and it scares him. Pay attention, Canada, he urges. Don't dismiss the Freeman as the Americans once did the sovereigns. You know, I just hate to see that, the, you know, as I said, I wish they could learn from where our mistakes and see where we are. We have been where Canada is now. And where he is now, it seems, is utterly driven. A man who will not give up his fight, even though he has already lost. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Springfield, Missouri. Well, Adrian's back in studio tonight. Your report raises a couple of key mm -hmm. questions, and we want to get to them in a moment. First, a quick break, then back with more on this story. Back now with Adrian and more on her investigation into the Freeman on the land. You know, we said that some people are clearly worried about mm -hmm. the threat they may pose here in Canada. How worried are police sounding about this? It's difficult to say. You know, I've spoken with a lot of Freeman over the course of, of the last little while, particularly with Rob, Robert Menard at length. I am certain that he would emphasize, look, this movement is not the same as the movement in the United States. It's more left-wing here, it's more peaceful, not hostile, maybe doesn't have the same violent potential as the American wing. And there are police officers who would agree with that 100%. So it's important not to exaggerate the risk. It's also important to know that, nonetheless, police are doing a lot of training here, as are officers of the court, in how to understand the Freeman, how to recognize this language, this business of I'm not driving, I'm traveling, how to diffuse these encounters so this, they don't end up in confrontations as best as possible. We know that the U.S. Marshals are spending a lot of time talking with Canadian police. There's a lot of cross-border training because there is a lot of cross-border movement with this philosophy. What are they most concerned about, please? You get the sense at the moment that what they're really worried about in the present is that perhaps well-meaning Canadians will get so wrapped up that they act out in extreme ways and end up in jail or in a state of financial ruin. There have been serious prosecutions for, for people who have acted on this and ended up uh, you know, using it as a tax evasion scheme or squatting on land and ending up with you know, serious repercussions. So that's a key concern. They keep hearing, you will keep hearing Freeman say, hey, it works, we have uh, great examples of success, and almost every time you'll hear the police say, well, no, you're likely going to get caught, and it will likely cost you. It's quite a report. Thanks, Adrian. Hello. In light of a recent inequitous report on CBC's The National titled Finding the Freeman, where Canadian people who believe in good government, equality, and the rule of law, and yet object to bad, corrupt, or unaccountable government and reject abuse of the justice system at the hands of profit-driven corporate entities, were compared to violent, extremist, anti-government terrorists 
the World Freeman Society Canada has decided to award the not-quite-so-coveted Twinkie Prize to Peter Mansbridge. That hatchet propaganda piece was the worst type of fear-mongering sensationalistic yellow journalism, and the Twinkie is yellow on the outside. That dismal attempt to denigrate the beliefs of the freemen without any true examination of the validity of their basic tenets revealed a lack of inner substance and intellectual nourishment and was comparable to a Twinkie on the inside. The fact his head genuinely looks like a big giant Twinkie was not a factor in our decision to award him this prize. To honor Peter Twinkie Mansbridge and demonstrate our peaceful and loving nature, our response to being labeled and identified as potentially violent cop-killing extremists is to share with the good people of Canada some sweet, tasty, tiny, cream-filled cakes commonly known as Twinkies in his name. We will also send Peter Twinkie Mansbridge some Twinkies and invite all Canadians who object to tax dollars being used for government propaganda and yellow journalism in general to send Peter Twinkie Mansbridge a Twinkie or two at the following address. Thank you.